Hello and welcome back to another review. Me, Kevin, from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. Second review of the year and we've got another unopened bottle gifted for Christmas. One that I've actually asked for because I've had an older version which I really enjoyed. Um, but this is a, the newer style bottle. So this is the Old Perth Cask Strength Blended Malt. Unopened, so we'll get it in the glass just now. Because it's cask strength, I'll give it a wee bit of time to rest and then we'll get into it. There's a lot of kind of cool wee stories I found out about this that I need to try and remember, so I've taken some notes. First things first, let's get a good pop. Pour a wee dram in. So, this is Old Perth Blended Malt, cast strength, matured in cherry cask at 58.6% ABV. So what this used to be was, um, Old Perth, or Perth in, in particular in Scotland, was the blending capital of the world back in the day, as they say. A lot of the whiskies, when it was blended, was a lot of a mixture between your malts and your grains. So Old Perth was there for a long, long time. This was then built by a family to bring this recipe to us. It was then re-brought back to life by um, Morrison Scottish Whiskey Distillers. So the big thing that they changed their name because it used to be the old name, which I, I'll just not say their old name, but it's Morrison Distillers now is what I kind of known as, Aberagi Distillery, which is also in Perthshire. But they had this for a long time, sold it, I think it went to White and Mackay. White and Mackay bought over the old name and everything, and it just disappeared. The whiskey capital, um, blending capital of the world, just started taking different avenues, it started disappearing. And before we knew it, when this big capital of blends was on the doorstep, just vanished, disappeared, and Old Perth as well disappeared. So this is then, I've got some of the years and things here, which I can, get, I can try and put into my own words. So 1983, Old Perth was, was sold to White Mackay in 1993. So they sold it in 1983, they sold the farm and it became incorporated in 1983 um, to White Mackay, so 10 years later. And then in 2011, this was no more. This is when the old Perth blend just disappeared. So they kind of hung around, I think White Mackay done their own thing with it, didn't see it fit for purpose in their portfolio, and it just went off the radar. It was picked back up again uh, by Morrison and Mackay, which was a previous name uh, to Morrison Distillers and they've revamped it back up then it gets revamped again and now we have what we have in front of us we have a blend which the traditional old style was this so this was the old way that they made it old perth was a speyside highland isle malts with north british grain aged up to around 12 years so this was a traditional old style way of making it and majority of that whiskey was Macallan. That was most of the malt that got put into the Old Perth blend was Macallan, with a bit of North British grain and some other distilleries round about. I'm not too sure about the Isla, who we got from there, but Macallan was the meat to this, to the bone, really. Something would be good to kind of try, I think, of a mixture of that to see what it was then and now. I think whiskies came a long way. I've tried some older whiskies from different kind of generations and I think with all the better barley yeast strains and sad to say sometimes computers as well being able to know when the perfect times to cut and the perfect times to harvest and things like that I think whiskey has got better for me personally but again that can be different for everyone so we look at that and then we turn around and we find say later on in the year uh, 2000s that this has been brought back to life. I think it was about 2014 this came back to the shelves uh, when it was White Mackay. Uh, sorry, not White Mackay, Morrison Mackay. Then when Morrison's uh, Whiskey Distillers came along, they um, have got this. This is still the same. The biggest difference is it's a blended malt. Not a blended whiskey. There is no grain in this time and it is coming from the whiskies that we have in this bottle are from the Glenlivet region. So I couldn't find exactly what the makeup is of it, 
but we're looking at whiskies that are predominantly known for having a very good sherry influence in their whisky. So we're Livet, I think we've got Tom and Tool, Tam the Villain, Breval. Around that area is the kind of some we can pick out, and I think there might be some further afield as well to bring this in. The fun and cool quirky thing about this is there's no age to it, but to keep this steady and to keep it um, quite level and consistent is they use the 12 year old um, Old Perth as well to just keep this level out. Between about five to eight years as well is the majority of the whiskey that's in here. It's the same recipe as the Old Perth standard, which is 46%. The only difference is this is its cash strength. This is at its highest level. And if the, the normal Old Perth has just been watered down to 46%. So we're looking at whiskey here, all from Speyside, which is, again, really cool. It's not on there to say that, I don't think. Not that I've uh, noticed. But I think the really cool thing is that Aberagi Distillery, which is the Morrison Scottish Whiskey Distillers' own distillery now, which is in Perthshire, which opened in 2017. They've been distilling since 2017. They've got a huge, huge warehouse to keep all their stock. All the stock is kept on site as well. They're able to keep their noses in to try these casks whenever they like to find out this is a perfect time to get this rebottled and get it going. So I really like that, that it's all in-house. It's very close to home. And there's a lot of care and quality into it. I think Carn, uh, the, the products here, especially Old Perth. We've got Old Perth, Carn Moore, Mactal and Brewer Dar, uh, or Brewer Dare. However, I say that probably wrong all the time. You're getting good consistency. We talk about price about this as well. The cash strength, you're paying, I think, maximum £40. But you're usually finding this about £35. For cash strength, blended malt, sherry whiskey, natural colour, non-chill filtered. So, I've talked a fair bit there, trying to remember everything that I, I, I was able to see. But when I get stuck in, I can smell this already. It's starting to fill the room. I've got my little dropper this time of water because I think I'm going to need it. This is the first gram of the day. We're going sherry cash strength. So let's see what we get on the nose first of all. We'll go to the palate, we'll add some water and see what changes that we can get. Is this going to be a good first visit? Is it going to be a tight neck pour? I've had this whiskey before, it's been at a different level and I've had the older versions. I think I had one of these before at a, uh, one of the festivals I was able to try and I've enjoyed it, but maybe the first experience, what do we get today? So let's have a wee check on the nose. It is definite. The sherry's there, it's a more sweeter sherry. The more kind of strawberry jam. It's a kind of strawberry kind of marmalade well, like orangey marmalade, which is weird. Tiny, tiny bit of spice, I would say, on there. There's nothing too hot in behind it. I think the sherry's hiding that alcohol for me too. There's not a big alcohol punch, even though the ABV is 58.6%. It's a sweeter marmalade strawberry jam slightly spicy cinnamon cardamom maybe not cardamom more cinnamon -y. it's yeah the slightest hit of that i use that word clean quite a lot the legs on it as well fantastic it's sticking to the side of the glass or if you think of a kind of sticky sherry when you pour it and you leave it it's down the side of the glass you can see that it seems like if you left this the way it is if I woke up in the morning, these legs would still be there. This is the way it would stick to the glass. It's going to be oozing with flavour, I'm hoping. So we'll go for a wee sip, get a wee taste on the palate. So let's see what we get. It's not everyone. That spice is more there. There's that more little ginger hit. There's a kind of really nice oak in there as well. That jam still hits around. I would say it says more jam. The, the marmalade, that kind of softer sweetness kicks away. But there's more of that kind of spice. Slightly drying as well. I say that I, I just get it. And oakiness. 
really long mouth feel really grips to the side grips to the teeth grips everywhere grips every single kind of taste bud that you can have it's not blowing the taste buds off for the alcohol either i think again i'm this if they're saying this Speyside Sherry Note, Speyside I always find is a nice lighter liquid. Maybe all these married together is even the ADV is so high, it's just very delicate in there. The balance of cask to that, and I think Sherry can soften things out. On the nose it's sweet, on the palate it's slightly spicier. And I like that, I, I quite like the difference there, because sometimes you can smell a whiskey and be very sweet and very sweet on the palate. That soft note of cinnamon that I was getting in the background on the nose is more prominent. Um, it's like back to front. When I've got it uh, on the palate, you're getting the spice, more spice, and then at the end, it's giving you that little bit of sweetness of the jam. But on the nose, it's the opposite. It's very sweet jam, marmalade, cinnamon uh, on there. So it's back to front. But it's got a kind of candied fruit in there as well, candied bread fruit. It's going to say like a lollipop, like a candied lollipop, a strawberry lollipop there. It's coming to mind just that, you know, you're younger and you get candy from stores or sweets. It's just got a kind of candied lollipop note. It's a really good rounded whiskey. The mouth feels so long, that little bit of dryness coming to the end of it as well. I've added a wee bit of water in here now <coughs> to see what we get. Another thing I've been able to see here is I've been able to write down um, where am I? They're using Oloroso first and second fill with a tiny hit of PX. And I think the PX is coming through on the nose with the kind of sweeter notes to it. And then Oloroso is giving me more of the spice. So I'm going to say this is kind of more Oloroso heavy, softer PX notes. But the percentages weigh up very well together. Um, as I said, the age groups that we're looking at here is about 5 to 8 years old. There's a bit of 12 year old in there to balance it all out. And then we've got... They're using uh, the, the Solera system for that, and so each release is better consistency. So I think this is great. It's great value whiskey. It, yes, let's look at it. People get scared. It says blend. Oh, no, it's a blend. This is top quality blend. This isn't a... Just quickly go and get something off the shelf and for 20 quid or whatnot that you can see. it's This is a high-end blended malt sherried malt, predominantly Speyside malt, natural colour, non-chill filtered, cash strength for 35 to 40 pounds. I think if I put this into a blind tasting and this was in the lineup, this would do very well in a blind tasting. I think this could potentially come out close to top just for the quality of it. If, if I said to you, find a blend in this lineup of five single malts and one blend, it doesn't stick out. As a blend, it sits there on its own as a very top quality whiskey. The water's not done much to the nose, it's still keeping the fruit forefront. Maybe the spice is slightly dropped off. But as it's got as a slight sherry note to it. If you leave sherry in a glass overnight and you pour it out and it just leaves a wee sticky note, it's a little tiny bit left. It's just got that note to it, the dried, it's a kind of slightly drier sherry. There's a slight, it's not sulphur, but there's a tiny wee bit sulphur trying to kick through or, or an eggy note. It's, it's really starting to open up. I don't know if it's the water, if it's been sitting in a glass, it maybe it has to sit in a glass a bit longer. That spice is staying there. There's a kind of caramel chocolate coming through to it as well. Slightly dark. 
maybe like a, a dark caramel chocolatey note coming through on top of those strawberries, marmalade, cinnamon, ginger. There's a lot going on in a really good way. I like this. I think value for money, it's a top quality dram. It's one that I actually asked for, for for Christmas and I was able to get. And I'm very happy I've got it. I think this is one that I'll, again, replenish once it's finished. I think value for money, you've got it. And it's cool to have a, a blend like this that I think people would talk about if you brought it out to them on a table. And the majority of people that like sherried whiskey, this is going to be right up your street. I'm going to finish this dram and maybe pour another wee one because I think it'd be rude not to, right? And see how we get on. But again, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for following. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Um, it'll be one of the best things you do in 2023, I tell you. Weekly content. I've got another whiskey next week that I'll be reviewing, which is unopened, that I got for Christmas. It's another Distel product. We'll leave it at that. Leave anticipation rolling. But that'll be back out next Friday as well. I'm going to go and sit back, finish this, enjoy the rest of my day, and I'll see you all next week. But as always, I've been Kevin for Kevin Gatton Whiskey. Join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Sludge.